I'm Mrs. Buchanan, and I am a third grade teacher at Fountain City Elementary School. Hello to the room 300 pet cats. I miss you so, so much, but I'm happy you're here reading with me today. And no matter what Knox County School you go to, I'm glad that you've joined me and chosen to make your reading brain stronger together with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are going to be doing three things. We, of course, will be reading. We'll be talking. And we're gonna work towards some tasks so that we can write based on what we read today. And doing all three of those things will make us stronger, more fluent readers. I want you to take a look at the picture in the corner. I think it's a special idea for us to think about and to remember, especially now. Reading takes you to new places. Hmm. Lately, we've been spending a lot of time at home to stay healthy, haven't we? Yeah, and sometimes that can get a little boring, right? Did you know that reading can actually help with that problem? Reading can make you feel like you're in a new place. And today, we're actually going to travel to a new place, even though we will never actually leave our houses. Hmm, how could that be? Just wait, you'll see. Now remember, you may have already read this text before, and you may maybe have not read this text before. If you've read it before, that is absolutely okay because reading a text more than once is a great thing for your reading brain to do. When we reread a text, we always are seeing and learning new things as we go through it again. Now, if you haven't read the text yet, that's okay too because no matter what, we're going to make personal goals this week to go back and reread the text more than once to help our reading brains. Now, I really need your help. I have another mystery to solve. Do you think you can help me out? Remember, someone who solves a mystery is called a detective, and another word for detective is sleuth. And if you joined me last week, you might remember that a sleuth can also mean bloodhound, or a dog that's used for tracking clues. And we will be like those dogs today because we will need to track some clues in order to help us solve our reading mystery. So I'm going to call you a sleuth hound, which is a total made up compound word. What do you think? Kind of a silly word, right? But you'll do such a great job tracking clues and helping me solve the mystery today. You ready? Let's get to it. I want to share with you a letter written to you from me. Now, if you joined me last week, we read it together then, but remember, rereading is a great thing for your reading brain to do, right? So whether you've read it before or not, we're still going to read it together today. Ready? It says, from the super sleuths, that's me, subject, mysteries. Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve a mystery? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues. Ask interesting questions. Then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read the book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. Well, great, according to this letter, we will be able to read closely today and we're going to look for clues to put together to help us understand what we read and solve reading mysteries. Look at the picture clues. Do you see them on this page? Do you see the camera? How about the flashlight? What about the compass and the keys? Now, how could these be tools for a detective or a sleuth to use? Did you think that the compass could help a detective travel in the right direction? Maybe the keys could help unlock clues or answers. 
And as the letter mentioned, we are going to have to go through some super sleuth steps. Now, if you look at the side of the screen here, we see the super sleuth steps. Do you see them there? I noticed that they're divided into four categories. Look for clues, ask questions, make your case, and prove it. Hmm, that first one, look for clues. Well, as detectives or sleuths, we must look for clues, right? But if we're good readers, where would we find our clues? Did you say in the text? You are so right. We will find our clues in the text. We will also, as good readers, have to decide which clues are most important and put all of those clues together to determine the main idea when we read. Now the next step says, ask questions. Do you ask questions when you read? Hmm, I hope you thought, yes, I do. Because if you ask questions as you read, that's really, really helpful. Asking questions helps me focus on the text so that I can better understand what I'm reading. Now the next step says make your case. Now you might know that we're not making the kind of case that's like a container that holds things. No, case is a multi-meaning word. So when detectives make a case, they use all of their clues to tell what they think or make a statement. And of course, we will be making our statements based on the text that we read today. And of course, the last step says prove it. That means that when we do make our case, we must use details from the text to show or to prove what we have learned. Wait until you see all the cool tasks we can complete to prove what we learn after we read the text together today. Hmm, all right, on this page, under unit four, what do you see? Right, it says one of a kind. What's another word we have learned that means the same as one of a kind? The word we've used in the past is unique. Unique means unlike others or even one of a kind. Let's read together what the sleuth hound is saying to you in his little dialogue bubble there. Ready? Hi, sleuth hounds. In this unit, you will be looking for clues about how something is one of a kind. Here are some sleuth tips to help you. Be unique. And on the side, we see those sleuth tips. Those are the same steps that we just read together on the previous page. Okay, so today we will find clues about how something is unique or one of a kind. And if you joined me last week, we read about street games and determined how they were unique. I wonder what we'll be reading about today. I'm excited to read. Let's get to it. What is the title of this passage? Yes, it's the wettest place on earth. Hmm, well, it seems like that gives us a big clue about what this text will be about. What do you think? Right, it seems like we'll be reading about the wettest place on earth. Wow, I wonder where that might be. Do you see any picture clues? There's an arrow pointing to one of them. I see that steep land with water around it. See it there? Now thinking about what we learned in social studies this year, that could be a coast, right? And perhaps it might even be the coast of an island if that water completely surrounds the land. Hmm. Did you see the waterfall too? Yeah, that definitely seems to support the idea of the wettest place on earth, doesn't it? What about the helicopter? Hmm, what clue might that give us about this place? What are helicopters used for? Did you think helicopters are used to investigate high places that might be hard to get to any other way? That's what I think, I agree too. Will you track along with me as I read the first paragraph? Great, let's read together now. 
Olivia and her family were on vacation in Hawaii. They were staying on the island of Kauai. Today, they were taking a helicopter tour of the island. They would be flying over its jagged mountains and steep cliffs. Wow, this seems like the beginning of a narrative or a story, doesn't it? Which characters did we meet? Right, we met Olivia and her family. What about the setting? Did we learn about that? True, the author tells us they are on vacation in Hawaii. Hmm. And they're staying on an island, right? Now the island's name was sort of hard for me to decode, but did you see the helpful feature the author included? The author showed me exactly how to pronounce the island's name. Take a look. K-Y-E. That was super helpful to me as a reader. The author didn't expect me to follow normal decoding rules here, which means the word maybe might come from a different language. So the pronunciation guide was really helpful for me. You'll see another example of a pronunciation guide in the next paragraph. Now, I also learned that Olivia and her family were taking a helicopter. Did you see that? Can you find any clues about why they might have needed one? Check the text. Right, the text says the island has jagged or rocky mountains that are steep or hard to climb. A helicopter would be a good way to get to the top of a mountain like that, wouldn't it? I want you to read the next paragraph. It's where that green bracket is to yourself. And I want you to find out more about where the helicopter is taking Olivia and her family. You can read out loud or you can read silently, but I'm gonna stay quiet for just a bit while you read. Remember, be thinking about where the helicopter is taking Olivia and her family. Go ahead. All right, did you see MT period? Do you see it underlined there? Hmm. That's an abbreviation or a shorter way to write the word mountain. Now after that, did you see that word? It was really kind of hard to decode, wasn't it? But did you see the pronunciation guide? Yeah, it helped us read the name of this mountain. Let's take a look. Y, all, A, all, A. Let's put that together. Y, all, A, all, A. That's an interesting word. Let's say that again. Y, all, A, all, A. Now we see that this does come from a different language. It comes from Hawaiian. And what does it mean? Did you find that in the text? Yes, it means rippling waters. What are rippling waters? Did you think that they're water, that, that it's water that moves along a certain way? Yeah, that's exactly what that means, you're right. Now I think we can begin to think about our mystery, don't you? Remember, we were thinking about how something is unique or one of a kind. Now how is Mount Waialeale one of a kind.
right. It's one of the wettest places on earth. That's unique. Now the text tells me it gets a lot of rain and that there's a small lake at the top of an extinct volcano. Now I know extinct animals are animal species that are no longer around on earth, right? But what might an extinct volcano be? Hmm, the volcano's still there, right? Maybe it's just not doing something. If it's extinct, what might it not be doing? Yes, it no longer erupts. This is connected to what we have learned in social studies this year. That's pretty unique that this mountain was actually once a volcano. Cool. All right, Sleuth Hound, I want you to read the next paragraph to yourself with this purpose. What else seems unique about this mountain? Take a moment and read this paragraph to yourself. All right, did you find any facts about Mount Waialeale that make this place sound like a unique or one of a kind place? Did you find any? Yes, the first one I found is that it's nearly or almost impossible to hike up this volcano. Hmm, this is because the author tells us why. The sides are very steep and slippery since they're wet. That does sound tough, like it'd be tough to climb up. And it actually sounds like a pretty unique place, doesn't it? Different from other places I know for sure. Can you find the words rain gauge? You see them there? Now this ties to what we have actually learned about weather tools and science. And I love when that happens, when we can make a connection between one text and something else we've already learned. However, if you didn't know what a rain gauge was, let's say you didn't know, did the author give you any context clues to help you sleuth pound? Take a look. Yes, the author says to measure the rainfall. So that gives me a really big clue that this must be some sort of tool that's used to measure how much rain falls in a certain place. Now, read the next paragraph with this purpose. Find out if there is any evidence that people actually have hiked up this volcano before. Find out in that paragraph, go ahead. Okay, did you find any clues that tell us humans have tried to hike up this volcano? 
Yes, the text says despite the hazards or even though there are dangerous obstacles, people actually have walked up this volcano. Wow, did you find any specific clues to know that this is true? Let's take a look. Right, the ancient Hawaiians built an altar or a very special place there long ago. Now, the narrative also mentions that a more recent visitor left a small wooden statue. Hmm, what does recent mean? Right, it means not so long ago. So not like the ancient Hawaiians, but there was a visitor not that long ago that's left behind that small wooden statue. Now, let's read the last paragraph together. Ready? From her perch high in the sky, Olivia looked down at one of the wettest places on earth. She thought it might also be one of the most beautiful places on earth. Wow. Now the author says that Olivia is looking down from her perch high in the sky and thinking about how this is such a beautiful place. Hmm. Now I know my cat Toby, she loves to sit on her perch by the window and watch the birds, but is that the same kind of perch that Olivia is on? What would be her perch that's high in the sky? Hmm. Oh, right. This, this, this is a way the author is trying to tell us about the helicopter that Olivia is on. She's sitting in the helicopter, and the helicopter is high in the sky because she's in it. Yeah, that makes a whole lot more sense. Well, now that we've closely read the text, Let's take a look at the sleuth work. You'll see it down in the corner there. See it? All right, let's take a closer look at those pieces. The first task says gather evidence. Let's read. Which parts of this story might be a fact? Which parts are opinion? Make a T-chart that lists the facts and opinions in this story, of this story. Remember, a fact can be proven, right? It's something that we could research. We could prove that it's true. Do you think there are some facts within this text? Yeah, I think so too. What's an opinion? Did you say an opinion is a feeling or a belief? Yeah, you're right. And I think we might be able to gather some opinions that were in this text too. We could mark them. We could underline the facts and the opinions that we find right in the text. But do you know what a T-chart is? They're asking you to make a T-chart. Do you know what that is? It's an organizer, right? And it looks kind of like the letter T. See the lowercase T. And I think that for this task, you could write facts on one side and all the facts that you find within the text, you could list them here. And then on the other side, we could include any opinions that we find, right? And we could list them on the other side of the T-chart. I bet you'll find several. All right, let's look at the next one. It says, ask questions. Let's read. If you could talk to someone who managed to make the difficult hike up to Mount Waialeale, what would you ask that person? Wow, write down three questions that you could ask. Hmm, that's an interesting task. What questions would you have for someone who was actually able to hike up that mountain? We already have some text evidence that supports the idea that this would be a really, really tough hike to complete, right? So can you write three specific questions that you would have for that person? Maybe you could even think of more than three, right? Let's look at the last one. It says, make your case. Let's read. What is the best way to explore a place you're visiting for the first time? Write reasons that support your answer. Well, what kind of prompt is that? Yeah, that's an opinion prompt. 
They want to know, in your opinion, if you were exploring a place for the very first time, what would be the best way to do it? Would you use a helicopter like Olivia and her family? How about hiking that new place if you could? Maybe you have an idea for a different way. I want you to work on creating an opinion paragraph to tell what you think is the best way and then also to explain why you think that would be best. Wow, I really loved reading with you today. Let's go back and recap what we did. First, we learned what a sleuth was and how we could be reading sleuths. We also read about Mount Waialeale and how it's unique. We were gathering clues, right, to help us know how. And then we looked at some of the tasks that we sleuth hounds are now ready to work on. But after you finish those tasks, of course, I want to give you a little challenge task too. It's really exciting. It's really creative. Are you ready to see it? Here goes. I want you to create your own brochure or advertisement for Mount Waialeale. Wow. So imagine you wanted to share with people what makes this place so unique and so exciting and a place that they might want to go to for a vacation. Your job would be to create something that makes people want to visit Mount Waialeale. Now you can use a regular sheet of paper and leave it flat, or you can fold the paper to look like a brochure, like the picture down at the bottom here. You can make your paper look any way that you like, however you want to do it. Now, your advertisement should include interesting facts from the text that you think would make people want to come visit this unique place. So you could use the facts part of your T-chart from our gather evidence task, and maybe some other facts that you didn't include on there to make people want to visit. You could even draw some pictures to make your advertisement more interesting. And then I want you to share your brochure with someone at home. Share with them what you've created. I bet they'll be so excited to see it. Now, one last thing, don't forget, we said this in the beginning of our lesson today, how important it is to reread a text. So I don't want you to forget to go back and reread the text to help your reading brain grow. It will probably also help you complete all of your tasks that go with this text. You could even read to a brother or a sister or another adult in your family, but don't forget how important that is for your reading brain and making you a more fluent reader. Well, that's it for now. Did you see how reading can take you to a new place for a little while? You might have even forgotten that you were still at your house while we traveled to Mount Waialeale. And that sure was an exciting and unique place, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, again, my name is Mrs. Buchanan, and I hope that you have a uniquely fantastic rest of your day. Bye, everyone.